This is Wren Smith and I'm at Bernheim Forest with a outstanding volunteer naturalist Joe Rogers. I'm interpretive programs manager and one of the thing, fun things I get to do is spend time with these great people. So I'm out here in the woods today and I am curious as to what in the world Joe is doing with that golf club. Are you planning on golfing in the woods Joe? Well you know what there is an application and a connection with golf club heads and this tree right behind me which is called the native persimmon and the native persimmon has a, an extreme hard dense wood that at one time golf club manufacturers used that wood for the head of the uh, drivers because it's so dense and it could take the shock of that striking that golf Ball and it wouldn't fly apart. So there is some benefits of natural native materials that we have growing right here in our mist in uh, in Bernheim Forest. That's good to know. Yes. I've seen cross sections of that wood. I know it's in the ebony family, so it's really hard and black. In yes, the it has a brownish, blackish interior on the heartwood mm -hmm. and the grain is real close. So therefore, it uh, it's really makes a great application for uh, durability as far as uh, its use in whether it be golf club heads or maybe any other okay. furniture or, or, or cabinets or flooring or whatever it might be. And let's not forget the persimmon fruit. Do oh, you know yeah. the persimmon tree, I just have to say, Joe, because it's really special to me because it was probably the first tree that my dad helped me recognize. And it was probably here at Bernheim Forest. And he showed us that blocky bark that he said yes. looked like alligators, but he also let us eat persimmons. He, he, surely you didn't get it too early. Yes, he did make <laughs> sure we had one that, uh, you know, when you eat an unripe persimmon, no. uh, it's like having a mouthful of fuzzy wrinkles. Yeah, pu yeah puckers you up r yeah. quite quickly and you'll but, learn and never forget that, will you? That's right. You know, but, some of the, some of the uh, folks talk about the persimmon and it's uh, not really ready or ripe to eat till after it frost. Well, persimmons have variability in their ripeness, so it could come maybe as far as the first or second week of October, maybe up into the first or second week of November, just depending on the maturity of the tree, maybe the exposure. But frost typically happens right in that time period, so people associate frost and the ripeness of the persimmon. But however, Diosporus virginiana, which is Diosporus is the genus, is Greek for food of the gods. So it is extremely sweet and highly nutritious for our wildlife because it's starting to ripen this time of year before winter comes on. So a lot of our mammals and our birds and many other uh, turkeys could, and deer are fattening up on the persimmon. We didn't have a lot of persimmon this year because I think the late frost uh, nipped a lot of the flower buds, but Nevertheless, uh, maybe they'll rely on some of the nuts and acorns and some of the other uh, soft mast that uh, might be available to them uh, here in, at Bernheim. All right. Well, thank you so much, Joe. I hope people will come out and look for persimmons and other trees. And there's the, the little fruit of there. the persimmon. We found just one. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Joe. Great spending time with you. As okay, always. you're welcome. Thank you, Brent.